It's a crucial moment in time for liberty. And the timing of this uprising is also crucial. It is inexorably linked to the U.S.-China trade talks, which may or may not be in the final stages. One thing is certain. China's economy is being hurt by de facto sanctions, a.k.a. tariffs. Joining me now from Dallas, Texas, co-founder and chief strategist of GDP Advisors, Seth Denson. Seth, uh, there are reports out of China that inflation is starting to rear its ugly head. And, and this is not terribly surprising when you consider the previous reports we've heard about the Chinese economy. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, we've said it all along, Graham, that, that China had a lot more to lose in this trade war than the United States did. The U.S. economy is, a, is in a much stronger position uh, and could withstand this. And what we're starting to see is that China is now wanting to engage in more talks and change the way that some of these tariffs have been structured in large part because they, they need a win for their economy. One of the things that they're suffering through right now is, is a huge uh, percentage spike in pork. And, of course, uh, pork is a mainstay of, of the Chinese uh, food staple. Year over year, it's up somewhere in the neighborhood of 69%, which is driving up uh, inflation. Uh, meantime, the U.S.-China trade war is also hammering what I guess you could call projections, global projections, of, of how the global economy uh, is being affected. And I don't know if the IMF uh, is trying to overstate this as, as, a, as a way of a, some sort of warning shot or not, but I really wonder the accuracy of this assessment. Well, I mean, listen, we've been talking about for a while that the, the global economy is in a little bit of a slowdown. And, and sure, the, the Chinese and U.S. trade wars are having some impact on that. But to what point? We're still in growth mode. So while we may not be seeing the 3% growth projections that were originally made in the global economy, we are still seeing over a percentage point of growth. And so the, the key point there is growth. We're still right. seeing it throughout the world. And we should point out, uh, by the way, that the stock markets are still, in the U.S. anyway, are still near record highs, right? I mean, through all this tumult and all the negotiations between the United States and China and all the machinations that we're seeing politically in Washington, D.C., we still have the Dow over 27,000, right? As hard as they try, the mainstream media can't get the market to turn, right? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the, the s and is looking good. The Dow's within 2% of an all-time high. Markets are doing well. And we're having some bank stocks reporting. Why do we care about bank stocks on this program? Well, in my opinion, when you look at bank stocks and, and how they report, it's a reflection of how healthy a certain amount, a large amount, of the U.S. economy is. That's exactly right. Listen, it's all a tied in. And, and the financial sector of the United States plays a huge role in the overall financial position of the United States. So they absolutely matter. And bank stocks are coming in what right now? We've had a few reporting. How are they reporting? Yeah, you know, yeah, J.P. Morgan Chase, for example, is coming in around 3%. So they're doing, they're doing better than and, projected. And more to come. Seth, thank right. you.